Science fiction novels are often filled with advanced technology and futuristic societies, alien worlds, and alien races. Much of the time in science fiction, humans have conquered the stars and found their own place among the cosmos. Good science fiction is meant to challenge the reader to think in new ways and to challenge the reader to consider things that they otherwise might not have considered. That being said, is there a place in science fiction for mysticism? There are several authors who have added elements of mysticism into their work. In this video, we focus on how some elements of mysticism are portrayed and deconstructed in the classic science fiction work Dune by Frank Herbert and in Dan Simmons' 1984 series The Hyperion Cantos. This video will contain some pretty significant spoilers for both series. Mysticism is somewhat of a difficult word to define. Essentially, mysticism is the idea that through contemplation or by surrendering to some esoteric unknown that one can find spiritual apprehension and understanding of arcane forces that perhaps drive the universe. In fantasy books, mysticism is more easily portrayed, but science fiction, unlike fantasy, does not have the option to rely on magical elements within the narrative to portray forms of mysticism. Instead, science fiction authors who choose to include some form of spirituality in their work have to go about it from a different angle, which ultimately leads to them explaining away much of the mysticism. The Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons talks of the void which binds, an unseen incorporeal realm of existence which pervades the entire universe. The void which binds is also referred to by a more technical name in the series, Plank Space. Because of its nature, the void which binds is not very well understood by the vast majority, but it is the domain that connects all of reality, binding the universe together. It was thought that all consciousness flowed from the void which binds. One who mastered the void which binds did this through empathy and compassion, for the void was also a realm of emotion. A master of the void could bind their own being to the consciousness of any other living creature. And since the void existed beyond time, they could even interact with those who had died, experiencing their thoughts and memories. And finally, one who had mastered the void was also able to physically travel through time. The Hyperion Cantos takes some elements of real-world religions and mythology to expand upon the concept of the void which binds as well. Keep in mind that these books are works of fiction and don't necessarily reflect the truth of the real world. The book suggests that the biblical figure Jesus was perhaps not the Son of God, but in fact the first human who was able to travel through the void which binds. And realizing that the secret to unlocking the portal lied within his DNA, he gave of his literal blood and body, his DNA, during the Last Supper, in order to allow his disciples to connect with the void. But his disciples had been driven to near madness. Their attempt to reduce the intangible into words ultimately failed. They became dogmatic, and the portal closed yet again. Mysticism in Dune is betrayed differently from the Hyperion Cantos. The Fremen religion is based on a mix of Buddhist and Islamic beliefs, and the Fremen have a large variety of superstitious traditions. Much of their religious views were implanted by the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood long ago under their Missionara Protectiva, a protocol of religious engineering. The giant worms of the desert on the planet Arrakis, who the Fremen called Shai Halud, were directly tied into Fremen mysticism. When a young sandworm was drowned, it produced the deadly substance in which the Fremen called the Water of Life. Only a reverend mother, a Sayadina, had the power to change the substance, converting it. The Fremen would drink of the Water of Life after it was converted and experience its narcotic properties. In sum, it would unlock dormant prescient sight. The concept of prescience, like the concept of the void which binds in the Hyperion Cantos, at first seems more mystical than it is. Prescience in Dune is actually based on the ability to understand and recognize patterns. The genetic information was always there, simply needing to be unlocked. This is how Leto II, the God Emperor of Dune, describes his golden path in a conversation with the Gola Dunk in Idaho. I have set up a pattern in it. A pattern of patterns. So you say. Information is frozen in patterns, Duncan. We can use one pattern to solve another. 
Flow patterns are the hardest to recognize and understand. Since individuals had the potential to recognize patterns to varying degrees, some had greater prescient abilities than others. None in the original saga were ever as powerful as the god Emperor. The Spice could unlock prescience in some Bene Gesserit due to their greatly honed abilities, relating to powers of perception. This was also how the guild navigators acquired prescience. It is related to calculation essentially. The God Emperor's goal was to prevent future prescient entities from seeing humans in prescience. He said this to Duncan and Siona, I give you a new kind of time, without parallels. It will always diverge. There will be no concurrent points on its curves. I give you the golden path. That is my gift. Never again will you have the kinds of concurrence that you once had. If humanity's patterns could no longer be recognized, then prescience cannot be used against them. It is for perhaps this reason that those who are prescient have a difficult time seeing each other in their prescient sight. Since one who is prescient can foresee and shape their own path to their liking, they could not be tracked in the same way as a non-prescient entity. So that was just a brief look into how both of these series portray mysticism. Herbert and Simmons both present concepts which on the surface seem magical, but as details are gradually given, we receive a better understanding and realize that what they are describing is in fact not supernatural, but completely tied to the natural world. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Ideas of Ice and Fire. And to my Dune fans out there, I assure you that Chapter House Dune, Episode 7 of my Ultimate Guide to Dune, is coming soon. I've been having art commissioned because there's actually not a lot of fan art that I could use that's been done for those later books. So I've been actually getting art commissioned for the first time with Chapter House Dune. The artists have been producing some incredible work, but it is a little on the expensive side. So if you want to support this channel, click the Patreon link in the description. I hope to make Ultimate Guide to Dune Episode 7 the best episode yet.